Rockstar Games is known for being one of the largest and most successful video game companies in the world. Besides that, they're also known for releasing some of the best titles in the industry ever. And I guess sometimes Fortune favors not. Their open world building being at the top, barely having any competition regarding the category. As Rockstar has been releasing more and more video games throughout the decades, they have been increasingly making their worlds more and more mysterious, adding endless easter eggs and encounters. In today's video, I'm gonna be going over Rockstar Games mysteries and easter eggs. And if I didn't include some examples you think are worth noted in the video, feel free to drop them in the comments down below, I'm eager to read your suggestions. While roaming the open world in the town of Sandy Shores, you know the one where Trevor lives at, if you remember him? Trevor Phillips Enterprises! We can find a burned and broken down house with a lot of graffitis on it. At the entrance, there is the message, there will be eight. And this symbol with four circles above it that can also be found again throughout this place. Now remember this symbol because it would really come in handy later. The number eight is countlessly drawn as well, really making it seem like an obsession. In the back room of the house, we can see another graffiti. Eight is just infinity stood up. Detective. Seems like we got a genius on our hands. In the corner of the room, there's a shelf with a few jars and some other used scrap. After inspecting it, it seems likely that these are indeed human organs. I mean, they're not baby aliens, right? A touchy detail, there's a pair of running shoes hanging from the ceiling that could be indicating that the apparent victims were joggers. Behind this bush in the back of the house, there is a message most likely left by the locals. Go away, Marl Abraham is your orangan. Down the street at this location, we can find a note with the date December 2004 that says Suspected killer Merle Abrahams dies in prison. Merle Abrahams, the suspected infinity killer, passed away in Bolingbrook Penitentiary while awaiting trial for abduction and torture. Abrahams, 57, was suspected to be responsible for the infinity murders, a series of disappearances that happened five years ago. Police believe the eight victims, who were all single young men killed while jogging, were all murdered by the same person and had circumstantial evidence linking Mr. Abrahams to the victims. No bodies were ever found and Abrahams never confessed, although he didn't meant to have a weird obsession with the number eight. Southeast of this place, there is a series of eights, but with a palm and a rock. One is done, two was fun, three tried to run, four called mom, five is not alive, six is next, whatever the fuck he meant by that. Seven's in heaven, eight won't wait. Close to this location, there is another clue. They want me, they can have me, but they can never get my people, even though I shall leave them sad enough where they put me. But the interesting part about the second clue is that we can also see the message 8 won't. In my opinion, this might have been the last message Marl was able to leave as he could have been taken into custody by the police. But the only way forward lies within the last two lines of the poem. Our next stop on a mother trip takes us to where Marl was being held at, Bolingbrook Penitentiary. On one of the walls, we can find another message left by him. Where water and land meets fire once spewed forth, there the infinity eight shall stay until I return. Remember when I told you guys to remember this? Poor Moro left us a map indicating north. It's the same place as this one. At this place, we can find eight dead bodies wrapped in duct tape. I personally was only able to find two of my own, but here's the map with all the dead bodies. Some people suggest that this is not the real work of the Infinity Killer because some of the bodies look female and he only killed the men. And we also need to take in consideration other factors like that they're in the fucking ocean by the way. They could have gone taken away by the sea or flushed up to the top again. But I think this is the real deal. And it's just that Rockstar didn't think of it. After all, I get it. It's not even tied to a mission, neither there is a look for this Marl Abrahams. The Infinity Killer, as you can tell, is heavily inspired by the real life Zodiac killer. The only difference is that Merle has been caught, while the Zodiac hasn't been till this day. I think this about settles our first mystery of the Infinity Killer. There is a number 199-367-3767 within the game that can be called through the phone. The number will be listed as black cell phones and this call will trigger a random explosion around you. The reasons and explanation as to why it happens are unknown. 
I mean, the the reason it happens is because you called the number in the first place, but you, I think you get what I mean. But if you get the brilliant idea to call the number again, it won't work. You need to switch to different characters, and even then, they kind of seem to have this one-time use thing. I found that the only way you can do it again is by restarting the game. At this location on the map, deep in the ocean, you can see a light. If you decide to dive deeper towards it, you can see that it closely resembles the hatch from the TV show Lost. But the hatch in the show was on land and not in the goddamn ocean as this one. When getting close to it, you can start hearing some knocks. This is actually a Morse code. Shout out to all the bright minds on the internet that figure out what this actually means. The message apparently says, hey, you never call, how'd you fancy going bowling? This is a sick ass reference to one of the calls you get in GTA 4 from Roman, Nico's cousin, to go bowling. Nico, it's Roman, let's go bowling. Okay man, we go bowling. But PS, the only way you can get down there in the first place is by having the right equipment, or a submarine. Whenever I tried to get close to it, god mode was disabled and the pressure of the water would just simply kill me, so keep that in mind if you want to visit. This is by far the most popular mystery in this game. On Mount Gordon, between 11pm and midnight, the ghost of a woman appears standing- oh my- I almost said she was standing, it's pretty clear she ain't got a pair of fucking legs. The ghost of a woman appears floating in the air. She seems to be somewhat hostile, disappearing whenever the player gets close to it. But for me, there was either a glitch or she was such a sweetheart that she decided to stick around even though I shot at her a few times. At her feet, there is a message written in blood. Jock. The ghost will only appear once a day for an hour, so be quick because at the exact time the clock turns midnight, she will vanish. But while she's there, we can hear some very disturbing sounds. Besides this, we can hear her cry and begging for her life to someone. In the description, I'll, I'll leave a link to a video showing all the noises heard. If we search in the in-game phone online, who killed Leonore Johnson, we will be redirected to this site. This is another mystery of its own, and I'll be covering it in this video, so stay tuned if you want to hear it. If we click on the article Blood on Rocks, we will be redirected to a newspaper article of the murder on John Lee Cranley Evans, 22 years of age, dated March 15, 1978. The title says Tragedy at Cliffs. It was an accident, claims heartbroken husband. If we read the article, we learn that the name of the husband is John Jock Cranley, 26 years of age. The same damn name as on the cliff. Apparently, the two were having troubles in their marriage. Chuck wanted to leave Blaine County for Los Santos to pursue a career as a stuntman. Jolene wasn't a fan of it and wanted him to stay and help her take care of her parents and the house. One day, they decided to go up Mount Gordo as a short trip overlooking the lighthouse. There is presumed Jock pushed her off a cliff and it's most likely the truth because of the sounds made by the ghost. Jock was never incarcerated for his most likely actions because of a lack of proof, with him giving out statements like, even though she was ruining his life and dreams, he loved her and he would never do something like that. It was an accident. Job Evans asked for a proper investigation because of his sons-in-law immediate release, but as seeing that the events of the game take place in 2013, the murder that took place 35 years ago was never solved. But back to Jock here. This is not the only GTA game he's ever been in. He was the stuntman in Vice City Stories. By searching www.jockcranley.com in the in-game site, we come across the man himself. This motherfucker is going for governor of San Andreas. He apparently achieved his dreams after his wife's death. In these paragraphs, we learn all about Jock, his drug addiction and other erratic behaviors. After a successful career, he's pursuing politics. As he says, San Andreas has been through hell and back, and so does he. But my suspicion is that there is no mention of his wife in this, which is certainly off-putting. I mean, for God's sake, he even has a test to find out how much of a patriot you are, with some really stupid questions and answer options. But this is the story of the ghost of Mount Gordo, aka John Lee Cranley Evans. Now to answer the question on the side, did she fall or was she pushed? I'm gonna say she was pushed. Now this easter egg doesn't have that much explanation from Rockstar, so here's when fans come up with their own theories. 
Back in the 60s and early 70s, the Mason family, a murderous cult, was around causing a heap of trouble in LA. There are suspected to have been about 18 members in the cult responsible for more than 7 killings, but they were only held accountable for 7 of them. They are the same group that practically appear in the movie Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. It is believed that this is a reference to them as Los Santos is the gamified version of LA. At this house in the game, there is a group of people partying. Usual stuff, right? Yeah, but the thing is when bumping into these NPCs, they instantly die no matter the force put against them. This could be referring to how defenseless the victims were in real life, or it could just be a bug, as there are more NPCs in the game that can die from a single touch. But what do you think? Is this a reference to the Mason family, or could it be just a mistake in the game code? Earlier in this video, back to the Ghost of Mario Gordo case, I said to not forget about this in-game website because I'll be covering it too. I decided to let this one for last simply because it's my favorite one of the bunch. Leonora Johnson was a young actress trying to make it big in the movie scene. Born on August 29th, 1952, somewhere in the Midwest, Leonora was born into an average family. Throughout her life, she was said to be the kind of early physical developer and late mental developer. The shorter version of it would be smoking hot and pretty dumb. At the age of 15, she left school to pursue an acting career in Los Santos. Because of her looks, she was able to make it big in the scene. She was also rumored to get a big role in the next movie as promised by the director. But she would never get to play it, as on January 17, 1975, her mutilated, dismembered body was found with the help of an anonymous tip to the LSPD. The author of the the article made it an obsession of his, ruining both of his marriages because of it. He also came up with the list of suspects that could have done it, noting motives and connections to Leonora herself. Funny enough, he named himself as the last suspect because he was abducted and interrogated by the police, turning out he's got a full SEX dungeon full of her pics. I mean, this guy really sounds like a fucking creep for real now. <laughs> The photos displayed on the side are truly horrifying, but the sad part is that police suspect it didn't even fucking happen where they found her body in the first place, most likely meaning that the poor woman was tortured and taunted by her killer before she died. I can't go over the details because it would take forever, but supposedly later the author wrote about groundbreaking news, a confession letter withheld by Ira, the son of Solomon, aka Richards, I don't remember who, but he's the guy that you help as Michael in the mission and then later partnered with. There are about 50 letter scraps scattered throughout the map. I'll leave a link in the description to a vid with all the locations. After obtaining all the 50 letter scraps, the letter is finally complete. I'll let you read if you want, but pretty much this greedy mother tries to justify why he tortured her in that way and why he taunted her parents after her death. The whole letter shows how insane the killer is and the thing is the letter is dated almost two months after the killings and it highlights the name of the killer, Peter Dreyfus, and he is indeed one of the suspected killers mentioned by the author of the article. To make it even sweeter, the address is shown on the bottom. Then you can confront him as Franklin about his killing with Peter Dreyfus acting very weird towards us, to say the least. People, they want to consume me, they always have. To touch the hem, you know, so to speak. And who's to hold that against them? I don't. Well, what time is it? I got a few minutes before my colonic, you know, if you want to suck me off. I wouldn't mind. Motherfucker, do I look like I'm here to suck you off? Then trying to bribe you off before storming off when Franklin turns it down. After killing him, an article will be posted about a vigilante killing the newly found murderer of Leonora Johnson, Peter Dreyfus. Seems like the world finally knows who this fucking asshole is. After 38 in-game years, the mystery of who killed Leonora Johnson has finally been put to rest. All thanks to CJ Sun. When compared to its younger brother, GTA 5, the fourth installment in the series doesn't have as many easter eggs or mysteries, but the ones in are worthy of being talked about. The game has its in-game version of the Statue of Liberty. The model face for the statue is in fact Hillary Clinton, and instead of a torch, she's holding a cup of hot coffee. But the more important part is the inside. The only way it can be accessed is by a very known passage. You will need a helicopter to get there in the first place, but when you do get one, there's a door that you can go through 
through. The sign will say no hidden content this way. Inside you will find a massive heart that it's in fact beating and held by chains. This is the kind of stuff you'll see in Resident Evil for example, not in GTA but yeah, pretty cool stuff. At this location we can find a graffiti, a memorial site really. It names the former protagonists of GTA games, implying that some of them actually might have died. It's not the only reference here as we can find an entire building wall with graffitis remembering all the old characters or some that you'll recognize from the cover or loading screens. But the reason why I wanted to include GTA 4 in this video is because of the Eddie Lowe encounter. At this entrance of this alley, we get greeted by a man called Eddie. He immediately seems strange from his body movement and most likely the fucking words coming out of his mouth. Wait, wait, mister. Um, do you ever wonder, do you ever wonder if animals... They masturbate? He'll then ask you to drive him down to the docks of Liberty City. While on the drive through, his life stories and all that stuff start creeping Nico out, devising him to go get help. At the docks, Eddie gets out, telling Nico to wait for him to drop off the kids, and so he did. But the strangest thing about this encounter is his honesty towards Nico, really implying that this guy more than likely killed someone lately. Before the mission is done, he tells you to drop him off at Westminster. He still continues to be very very weird, seeing that he's off on a hunt for a nice boy. In the in-game website, we found out a jogger has been found dead, his head decapitated. Our suspicion was true, Eddie is in fact a serial killer. The next encounter is with Nico confronting him, but Eddie isn't so friendly anymore, attacking you as he says he's got a hunger to kill tonight that can be stopped. Then obviously Nico rocks his shit, but... The same side will report the death of Eddie, being suspected for up to 10 murders. Glad that side goes off to hell. Some people consider the swing from GTA 4 an easter egg, but it's definitely a bug as we can see this car running down the hill in San Andreas, both most likely appearing because of this cause. We can also find a reference to the game True Crime that came out in the early 2000s, considered to be a GTA clone. I mean, it's pretty fucking obvious. But still to this day, the biggest myth of San Andreas is the Bigfoot one. Players claimed and speculated for years of sightings of the Bigfoot, as it's probably the case it was never a Bigfoot in the game in the first place. But he did make an appearance in the Undead Nightmare DLC for Red Dead Redemption 1. John can talk to the Sasquatch as named in the game, clarifying that they eat berries, not babies. Come on John, just do better. The funny part is that the achievement for killing him is called 6 years in the making. This is the English one, but for the people having the game set in French, the achievement will be translated to no more surging CJ. That's actually a nice touch. Thank you, Rockstar. And no, I will not be covering this strange man. There are a million videos on this website covering it, and it would just be a waste of time and really just overdone. This is our first mystery into the Red Dead Redemption 2 entry. The owner of the ranch is one man named Eugene Wagner. It seems like the locals are kinda scared of him for some reason. There's a random encounter in the game that can happen. While riding your horse around, you might find a woman near her dead horse. She'll then ask you for your help, in taking her back to the place where she works at, Emerald Ranch. Besides her rant about her husband, she will mention the strangeness of this town. As I mentioned, she says that they're all scared shitless of the owner. But the most important thing is that the man has a daughter, which is name we do not find out from her. The woman tells us that she can be seen staring out the window, but the other workers told her to mind her own business. Apparently she has not left the house in months. Hosea says the same thing as the lady, in a mission further making it more suspicious than ever before. And indeed she is staring out the window, you can see her at noon or sometimes at night, as by her pale skin we can tell that the claims of her house arrest are indeed true. Or maybe she's just missing a lot of vitamin D. Whenever you try to get close to the house, Howdy, God damn jackass. Eugene becomes very hostile, easily attacking you by just using one antagonizing option at a time. I must have kicked his ass about 3 times before leaving, but jokes aside, there are not any other clues in this town about her yet. Near Fort Mercer in the scene of Ambrino, we can find this mail van broken down by the side of the road. Might have been robbed by the dark arts of the Ordrisco gang as far as I care, but in it we can find many letters. Between them we find a very important one from one Annabelle to her cousin, Miriam Wagner. Annabelle goes on to state that she misses her, and a neighbor of her mentioned her the fact of Miriam's lack of outside, let's call it 
outside showness. That does not make any sense. <laughs> Shunen goes on to state, I cannot ever begin to imagine how painful it must have been to lose Joshua in such a terrible way. The deal breaker of the letter is that this is our sixth attempt to reach out to her with the prior five attempts having no success. And seeing the state of the mail van, yeah. The sixth one wasn't really the charm. After the PS, she says a very important series of sentences. Uncle Eugene, with the greatest of respect, if you are withholding my mails from Miriam, or dare I say constraining her in any other way, I beg you to reconsider your actions. I know how much you love her, but please do not confuse love with possession. She is a beautiful, intelligent woman with her whole life ahead of her. So we clarify some things here. We know who the girl is, about her love interest Joshua, and of her captivity. I think it's time to go back to Emerald Ranch now. We got some digging to do. East of this place we can find the ranch's cemetery but there is no joshua there his grave actually sits next to the town saloon joshua burgess accidentally shot august 1898 inside the saloon we can see that something dramatic and strange has happened here we can see three bullet holes in the wall bottles broken and a trail of blood now, getting into the theories of the Easter egg. Miriam was dating Joshua, but Eugene disapproved of it. The inside of the saloon might have been the place where Josh was accidentally shot. More like intentionally, but that's besides the point. I think Mr. Wagner went to the saloon and attacked Joshua. The two most likely had a brawl where Eugene shot him, and the blood on the ground could be from him trying to crawl away, but he was put down by Mr. Wagner. A hatred towards him would explain why he wasn't bare with the rest of the people from Emerald Ranch, and of course the closing of the saloon and the general store. Then Mr. Wagner imprison his daughter in the house after killing her boyfriend. I think throughout our Red Dead Redemption 2 game time, we've all come across this burned down place. This was the town of Limpony. Now I know it's kinda small to be one, but they had a sheriff office, a general store, a little prison shack, don't mind the dead bodies, and a saloon. You can't forget about a saloon. Never. I never understood what happened here or who caused this mess, but after coming back lately I just observed how many barrels there are, and on some of them the print of the name Leviticus Cornwall is on it. Now if he's involved in this, I really don't know. Near Horseshoe Overlook there's another place burned. Some people say it could be from this, but nah, too much of a stretch. Also, there is no connection between the two points of interest. My theory is that Limpany was a victim of a massive shootout with another gang like the Van Lind one. Some of the old bearers could have been shot and burned the whole place down. In trailer 3 for Red Dead Redemption 2, we see a shot of Arthur seeing the aftermath. Maybe it was a cut mission of a sort, but we'll never find out. Not too far from Horseshoe Overlook, we find a dead body near this old Derrick. By eluding him, we find this letter, implying that Cornwall tried buying this man's business, but was rejected. Who knows, maybe this man was a town folk of Limpany. So Leviticus would have had to kill this man and burn the whole place down just to send a message. But I kinda struggled to wrap my head around these actions having absolutely no repercussions. I know Cornwall had a lot of the government under his pinky, but still, that's kind of a big felony. In this particular encounter, you stumble across a man and his wife, who invite you to dinner even though you were crossing on private property. They seem a little too friendly and excited. While the wife gets ready, the man tells us to go check up on her. But while up there, you can inspect shit around for a bit. You know when people use the expressions skeletons in their closet? These two weirdos took it personal. When you settle down to eat with them, we learn that these two are in fact siblings, and their parents passed away because of some horrible business as they say. If you want, you can reject for now, but interestingly enough, you can come back later to them. It doesn't matter if you decided to stay in the first place or leave, the same thing will happen to you. They will drug, rob and dump your ass into the pit. With the game showing us that Arthur and John aren't the first people to get this treatment. You can go back to the house and take your revenge and money back from these two ancestral deep shits, but if you decide to hawk that lady and take her out to the pit where they put you in, she'll have this to say. No! What are you doing? No! Please! No! Please! I'm sorry! Not here! Mama! I'm sorry, Mama! Yeah, pretty much this confirms the fact that these two weirdos definitely killed their parents because of a disapproval of their incest relationship. This could have been the horrible business they were talking about, but it seems that they didn't care much for the dad as he isn't really mentioned the way their mom is throughout this whole thing. But before going there, you might get lucky enough to run into this NPC, warning you to stay away from that place. Like I was riding through the heartlands the other day and caught through someone's land. Looked like an old pig farm. A couple called me over from the house. Very nice man and woman. 
very friendly. You would think this is fine, que no? And they keep saying that a traveler like me deserves some rest and refreshment, inviting me to stay for dinner. I was tired and I was hungry, but mi corazonada, the feeling in my gut said no. I don't know why, but I trusted it. Oh, yeah? Then the very next day, a man warns me to stay away from that place. So I live by my instincts. Apparently, they are known for their crimes by the people around. These two are inspired by the real-life couple of John and Kate Bender, two siblings claiming to be married just like them. Home sweet Alabama. Close to Strawberry sits a little homestead. On the front porch, we find a letter from a Jim Payton addressing his absence for a few days. Going to pick up Mildred from her mother's house, the new Mrs. Payton. It is addressed to the people searching for him at this address. The note heavily implies that Jim is a fresh new husband, but unfortunately, he will never get there. Down the road, a stranger yells at us to come see what's happened. There he shows us a man who fell off a cliff with a stagecoach. He speculates that he's the guy living at the Lenora View house. Then he goes on to inform the sheriff about it, most likely to get him a burial. If we loot the body, we find a picture of a bribe. This is in fact his wife Mildred. And we can confirm this by searching the lockbox and finding a wedding certificate for Jim Payton and Mildred Barr from May 1899. After discovering Jim's body, we can come back to the house a few in-game days later to find another letter, this time from Mildred, confronting Jim for not being there even though it's been weeks since the wedding. Yeah, I think someone should tell Mildred the truth, that she's a widow now, probably earlier than she expected. At this location, we can find us what appears to be a satanic ritual. The man in the middle has had his body cut in half, with some of his organs missing like lungs and heart. The game describes it as a pagan ritual. I don't know what this actually means before searching it online, but apparently it is the following. A person holding religious beliefs other than those of the main or recognized religions. We can take the pagan mask off the man's face, showing further damage. On the rocks, there are some symbols painted that I had no idea what they were, but I knew I saw something similar in Lacay. There's a YouTube channel by the name of Strange Man that goes into detail about this, revealing the true matter of the people we're dealing with. It turns out that these symbols are from the religion of voodoo and some Payomayombre shit. In this swamp, there's also other cultist references like ritual sites, shrunken heads, ripped apart holy images and a lot more. The strange man speculated that it could be the work of the night folk as they are known to walk around these parts quite fucking much, adding further proof along the video. I recommend you check out his videos, it's actually very interesting and you might just understand the whole cultist thing a lot better than I did. But what do you think? Are these the dirty deeds of the night folk creep or are they just two completely different things that seem to correlate? I wish I could have gone more in depth for these mysteries or easter eggs or even cover more because there are so many that will genuinely make your head spin. But the video is already kinda long and I kinda decided to just wrap the whole thing. 